Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm your host, Bob DeMarco. And on this edition of the Midweek Supplemental, we'll be taking a look at Gerber's new outdoor giant bally song type knife. Uh, I get a new Randall, a number two seven combat stiletto. Of course, we're going to be gushing over that. And uh, top 10 gifts from knife community friends. Uh, I've gotten I've gotten knives from friends I've made since starting this podcast uh, and starting this channel. Other YouTubers and and uh, and people have sent me fans have sent me uh, fans. You know what I mean? Listeners have sent me things and they mean a lot to me and they'll never leave the collection. And last week I, I detailed some knives by good friends, family and uh, actual makers. And this week I want to detail some of the knives that have been given to me for my uh, my knife world friends. So uh, that's what we have coming up. But as always, uh, we're gonna start with a little pocket check to break the ice. Now today, usually I have them in the desk in front of me and I thought how inauthentic, I should have them in my pocket and pull them out for you. So today I have the Emerson PSARC. Uh, PSARC stands for Police Search and Rescue Knife. Now the original version of this was just the SARC, Search and Rescue Knife, and it had a blunted tip, has a blunted tip. They still make that. So that if you're cutting under a seatbelt to uh, pull someone from a from wreckage, you don't, uh, you know, stab them accidentally with this incredibly uh, acute raven bill tip. I don't know. I just made that up. Hawk bill tip. Uh, so the peace arc is a favorite of mine. It reminds me of a, the Gununting sword uh, that the Filipino Marines use. And uh, it's just a, a favorite that doesn't get much use. I'm thinking this uh, needs the blades and such treatment. Uh, you can see, I don't know what, what it is, but the G10 uh, on these Emersons really pick up the dry skin and it's kind of gross. So I got to take a toothbrush and some alcohol and clean that out. I guess I didn't need to draw attention to it, uh, but uh, we all like our G10 nice and uh, grippy. So there you go. Uh, also in my waistline today, I have my Tops Rapid Strike. I opted for my Rapid Strike, double-edged. Why not? I say, why not? This is such a great little knife. Uh, it's a, what is this? A four and a half inch blade, I believe. Something like that, four inch blade. And uh, just a little honey, very, very slender. It jimped all the way around this handle. Um, if you notice, I don't know if you've ever seen the picture of this, but this has a glass breaker at the end. The tang comes to a sort of pyramid and it's you know, uh, intended for glass breaking. I ground that off for two reasons. First of all is uh, this to me is a self-defense knife and uh, with those double edges and that long slender blade. And in a self-defense situation, you might uh, be apt to grab it, the knife in reverse grip. And in such a case, I would wanna have my thumb over the top so that it would stop my hand from sliding onto that blade because there really is not much of a guard other than that choil, that forward finger choil. So I got rid of the that pyramidal glass breaker on the pommel for that reason. And also, it seems like uh, this is just not much to grip anyway, to get much uh, uh, energy behind that uh, that glass breaker. I, I could be totally mistaken. You know, uh, I did a glass breaker video this past summer uh, testing different glass breakers. At that point, I had already ground this off, but I didn't even think to try it. Um, in any case, I don't need a glass breaker on my rapid strike. That to me is like a little commando knife. Um, I, I'm a sucker for double edges, of course, and daggers, you know, that have been going through a stage, but, uh, I love the asymmetric double edge blades also, uh, like this or like the, uh, the big bear classic, whatever you call it, the, uh, the, the loveless style, uh, double hilt, um, love that double edge asymmetrical all for it. Okay. Last thing in my pocket is the Rough Rider uh, Micarta work knife. And this one was in the uh, the denim, the blue denim handle. Uh, this is a great little knife. This is the um, sort of the, the 
poor man's version of the number 47 uh, Great Eastern Cutlery. It's about the same size and same form factor, um, just 15 bucks as opposed to um, like 115 bucks probably. Um, great knife. I, I really do like this knife. It, and they call it the work knife, and it is a good worker. This has been, uh, I've been on Ikea duty again, and this has been what I've been using to open boxes because, I don't know, just been trying it out and uh, and cutting down boxes. Now, as you can see, I was good about hitting it with alcohol before we roll here. I'm not too much about showing tape smudges. I'd rather look at a nice clean knife. So these are the three things in my pocket today. I got the Emerson Peace Arc. I got the double edge Tops Rapid Strike minus the glass breaker. And I have the Rough Rider Micarta Work Knife. Uh, before we go ahead and uh, go into life, uh, knife life news, I wanted to talk a little bit about Thursday Night Knives. Uh, we've had a couple of really great ones these past few weeks. You know, I took a, a COVID break uh, a couple weeks back. And then uh, these last few episodes since we've been back have been excellent. People have been joining in uh, on the show. All you have to do is go to the knifejunkie.com slash join and have a smartphone or a uh, tablet or a laptop and just aim that camera to get some light on you. That's preferable. Otherwise you look kind of creepy and uh, you know, join the conversation about knives. You're not required to stay there for long at all. Just hang out, say hi, this is what I'm carrying, and you can take off, or we might strike up a conversation. So definitely check us out, Thursday Night Knives, live every Thursday night at 10 p.m. Eastern, right here on YouTube, or right over there on YouTube. So uh, join us, please. Uh, also, uh, if you like this show and other shows just like it by The Knife Junkie, uh, you might want to check us out on Patreon. We have three levels of support. You get Knife Junkie stickers, a mention on the podcast, early access to the Sunday interview show, and the midweek supplemental uh, with no ads during the show, and other exclusive opportunities like Hangouts, etc. Uh, your support helps fund the infrastructure needs of the show, like hosting servers, apps, and equipment, as well as knives for review, donation, and giveaways. So join us here on Patreon and see what... <laughs> Join us there on Patreon and see what helping us gets you. That's uh, theknifejunkie.com slash Patreon. And I'll say that one more time, theknifejunkie.com slash Patreon. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. A lot of knives uh, being mentioned there in that last liner. I love it. Uh, so Gerber has a new thing out. I'm calling it a thing because I'm not quite sure what to call it. It's, uh, it's a six and a half, six and three quarter inch bladed outdoors knife, but it comes in a Ballysong-esque package. Um, it is called, what are they calling this thing? I'm, I'm sorry, the Double Down. That's right, the Double Down. And it's uh, pretty cool looking. Uh, I've seen a few reviews of it already, kind of advanced reviews. We saw it I think it was SHOT Show last year. They sort of introduced the concept. I think they refined it over this past year and now are starting to, to uh, drip it out to, uh, to the culture. But uh, this thing, as you can see, opens up like a Bally song, uh, but it does not uh, flip readily. It's something that you have to uh, manipulate with both hands. But look at that. To me, this is looking like something Cold Steel would make. Uh, that big six inch blade and uh, and the handles. Okay, so right there you can see the uh, the model there is pulling back on the locks. I think there are two locks on it. So you cannot flip this thing. Um, but who knows, maybe there's a hack. But you can see right at the pivot there, uh, some gearing uh, where the two pivots of the two handle sides come together, there's some gearing. So it is uh, it is not loose and flippy. Anyway, I guess I've uh, I've stressed that enough, but this this is very appealing to me, and and it's rare that I say that about a Gerber. Um, you look at that, and you look at that last picture um, that Jim had up. You had it opened and closed, and you can see how large and capable it is here. Open, you see towards the end of the handle a uh, a big swale and a bird's beak for your hand, and then a forefinger choil. And that allows you to go way back on that blade, extending it by at least four inches. So that's about a 10 inch blade you could be swinging with. 
And then when you fold it down, it, it folds down into about a seven inch package. So uh, a really interesting kind of compelling outdoor knife type thing from, uh, from Gerber. Uh, I call it a knife type thing. I don't know what to call it. It's kind of like a small folding machete. Um, but anyway, uh, they're, they're, by the way, their locking mechanism TM is called the quad lock. So there you have it. Uh, kind of interesting, kind of exciting uh, from Gerber. Uh, next, we have Serge Panchenko, uh, who is always legitimately exciting and interesting. Uh, I really like his designs. I've never actually had one, but he's famous for the bean design and also uh, some, some knives he's put out through Boker, I think. Um, in any case, Serge Panchenko just put out uh, a, a utility razor, very much in his style. If you look at the handle, uh, the handle looks just like all of the, he put out three slip joints recently under his Serge, Serge Knives uh, shingle, and they all bore this handle. There was, a, I think, a worn cliff and a, and a clip point and a, and a spear point. Uh, so this is the same uh, basic chassis, it seems, uh, with a slip joint locking mechanism or slip joint opening mechanism. But as you can see, it's, it is built to accept a standard uh, razor. So really interesting. I've been seeing a number of uh, guys online, both reviewers and knife makers. Who did I see? Maybe it was Jim Skelton has one of these and was using it opening, opening up boxes of steel in his knife making shop and uh, just said that Serge Panchenko knocked it out of the park with this. Uh, a lot of different makers in the past five to 10 years have have done their um, take on the utility razor. I'm, I'm thinking of Todd Rexford and, uh, but many others. And uh, this is a very unique take on it. And it is so, uh, it looks so much like his style. So interesting, um, you know, I think this is a hundred, well, what, what is this? I think this is going for 115, 115 to 135 bucks. Uh, if you have use for it, very, very cool item from Serge Panchenko. Uh, his designs are, are really interesting. All right. So next state of the collection, got to talk about a couple of, a uh, couple of things that have happened here. I don't want to say I've done them. I'm, I'm going to say they've happened. Uh, well, let's start. Uh, I'm going to start in reverse order. Um, I got this yesterday. This was an impulse purchase uh, while buying uh, while buying a laptop for my wife. Uh, it's called the. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm laughing because it was sort of like, aren't I a good husband for buying this laptop? I guess I should buy a knife for myself. Kind of purchase. So this is. Uh, but but in reality, this is something I'd been looking for, and I wasn't able to find anywhere. And then some seller on Amazon had it had a couple of these. Uh, but this is the Condor tool and knife uh, out of El Salvador. This is their, um, they call this the dragon, the Norse dragon. It's like their Viking knife. Now I'm not gonna call it a sax because uh, I've been yelled at for, for saying Viking sax. So whatever, if this is a Viking knife, right? Uh, you have on the handle, you have this uh, dragon rune really nice handle you have there, Condor, El Salvador. I really love their font, beautiful. Uh, sort of burned in the, into the wood now, uh, and then you get to the 1075 hand, uh, blade. Look at this thing. This is a seven inch blade. This has the exact sort of dimensions as your uh, traditional combat knife, like the, um, well, the Randall one or the, or the um, K-Bar with that seven inch blade. Ooh, look at that, almost cut myself. Uh, so that triangle shape, that sort of old school look, that uh, roughly hewn uh, blade, everything about this knife I really like. It's very thin. I mean, relatively speaking for a knife like this and uh, light. I mean, not very thin. It's very light, somewhat thin on the blade. We've got this nice ferrule here. And uh, I just look forward to to having this knife, uh, apparently a lot of people use this as a as a sort of outdoor, um, you know, backyard cutting through the bush kind of knife, which a lot of condor knives are good for. This sheath is outstanding. Uh, I didn't think it would be necessarily. Sometimes I'm I'm not happy with condor sheaths. Sometimes they use a leather I'm not fond of. Uh, this is really nice. It's um, 
shrink, what do you call this? Welted, is that right? And and inside, you know, you've got a very acute pokey tip in this uh, in this sort of sax knife here. But so if you look down in the sheath, you can see that there is a really stout plastic uh, housing on the inside that takes the blade and, and really nestles it in this uh, sheath. It's not going to come through that leather at all. And that is always an issue with uh, this kind of seriously pointy blade. Uh, for instance, my bush sacks, uh, my mini bush sacks by uh, Bark River Knives uh, poked through, as soon as I got it, it was poking through the um, leather sheath and it has a very acute point so i had to i had to shellac some pieces of canvas on the end to make a little stop there uh, they took care of that with an insert uh, this is a very impressive knife uh, for what was it 65 bucks i paid for it so uh, yeah i highly recommend it i like condor tool and knife and uh, and i've been needing a sax ish blade i've been needing this kind of thing so uh, uh, you know, to round out the collection and the and the blade shapes and such. So glad I found it. Okay, so next we have, um, well, let me tell you first what I sold to 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 partially fund this. Uh, I sold my CRKT Provoke. That's the um, production version of Joe Caswell's Morphin Karambit. Uh, I sold that for uh, you know a, a, a very fair price. Uh, the guy got a good good deal on that. Uh, I sold my Tops um, Interceptor, which is a four inch Tanto. Sold that to a good friend of the show, a Blade Ogre, and then I sold uh, this, which I haven't sent out yet. My Tops Ranger's Edge. <gasps> You're getting rid of a dagger. You're getting rid of a Tops knife. I know. I just got rid of two. I decided. I, I have decided where my sweet spot is with tops. My sweet spot with tops is in either large knives or small knives, small hideaway self-defense knives. This is a great knife. This uh, five inch dagger uh, is really excellent. I love it, but it's just, it just doesn't fit my collecting needs. And since uh, I wanted to buy a dagger, which I'm gonna show you, uh, this one went. This guy got a great deal too. <laughs> because I'm a really great dealer, really, really fair guy. That's, I guess, what I'm trying to tell you. Uh, and then I was unsuccessful yet again, yet again. I mean, I feel bad for this knife because I've put it up for sale so many times and no one has ever bought it. And I'm like, I guess I'll keep you. And the knife is kind of like, yeah, until you get, you know, a wandering eye. Anyway, it is the ZT0055. The Gus Ciccini designed um, knife. This is uh, the production version of his Airborne custom model. It is really a great knife. It's got uh, a wonderful blade. It's very thinly ground, flat ground. And I'm not trying to sell it to you right now. I'm <laughs> uh, thinly ground, flat ground. The blade looks like a stealth wing fighter. The whole thing is just cool looking to me. Uh, it's got this SLT flipper that hides away. There it is when it's open. When it's closed, it just extends right here. You pull it, it's, it's got a little bit of take up. Sorry, that's just because I'm doing it lefty. It's got a little bit of take up like a revolver and then it goes. Very cool knife. Uh, this one is back in my pocket, back in the collection because I couldn't sell this one. Uh, but it's all going to fund what already arrived. So uh, there are a few more knives on the chopping block, like probably my Ultra Tech and some other things, but that was all in the service of this, of this right here. So uh, this is my new Randall Model 2-7. Uh, Model 2 is the fighting stiletto and the dash, well, the seven stands for seven inch blade. And uh, this was yet another opportunity grab off of Knife Center. Knife Center has, uh, the occasional infusion of um, Randall made knives that you can just buy off the shelf. And uh, I jumped at the opportunity because I have been really, um, since I got the number 16 special fighter, I've been wanting the stiletto. And now I kind of feel like my Randall made knives um, scratch has been itched. 
for now. I mean, there are plenty of others uh, that I would like to get, but really to get the number one blade and the number two blade was what I, was what I was really excited about. And this handle, well, let's take a look at it. This handle is what I really wanted. This is the uh, stacked leather handle. It's contoured like a Coke bottle uh, and, and looks the most like the emblematic combat Bowie. Uh, they do make this in a few other uh, shapes. Uh, one that swells out more towards the end, but is symmetrical, kind of like a coffin shaped handle. And uh, I've seen others and now I can't really think of exactly what they were. I think maybe stag or something. But this uh, symmetry in the handle here is what I was going for because it matches the beautiful symmetry of this seven inch hollow ground double edge blade. This thing is to me represents the classic um, American uh, commando knife style knife, commando style knife. Uh, World War II, I guess is when it's when it first saw action and combat and uh, it's been sought after ever since. I can't imagine personally um, strapping this onto my belt and going into combat with it only because I'd be worried about dinging it up. But that is the whole point. That's one of the reasons why I'm collecting it. The, or I shouldn't say that. That's why I have gotten two Randall made knives is that to me, the history of these actually going into co combat and serving you know, soldiers ever since 1937 in, in uh, soldiers and Marines, you know, fighting men of the Americas, fighting men and women. Uh, I, I just love that history. Of course, for me, this is not going to have that same purpose. But the fact that it is such a fine handmade knife, such a beautiful piece that I love, but has also a long, long proven history of kicking butt in the field. That's what I like. Okay, finally, finally, I got that out. So um, I can't believe I didn't bring my other Randall just to compare, but this is... Uh, this is a very exciting development in my collection. And um, for now, I'm going to have to back off a little, Just, you know, Randall made knives like them. And I'm all, I'm going to keep kind of going to Arizona custom knives. Cause they also have a, a flow of Randall knives that come through there, but those are from estate sales and knife, uh, you know, uh, knife collectors selling off collections and stuff. And you know me, I love pre-owned knives. I love knives that have a history, uh, not only, in terms of their pedigree, but in terms of their ownership. So I'm open. I'm open to all possibilities and Arizona Custom Knives is one of them. So thank you for coming on this, this journey through my collection. Uh, I'm very happy with the, with the uh, Norse Dragon. Of course, I'm thrilled about the, uh, about the um, Randall too. And you know what, little guy? I'm happy to have you back in my pocket. If you didn't, if you didn't see it, that was the sound of the uh, of the much maligned, or I, I should say, much ignored ZT0055. Definitely a cool knife. All right, next top ten gift knives from knife community friends. And uh, you, okay, so I set out to do the top ten gifts knives last week, gift knives, and uh, since I gotten so many from my brother and a, a whole lot from my parents and a whole lot from my brother-in-law and a whole lot from my wife. I decided to just represent one from each. And then um, I've had a lot of uh, designers and makers on the show and some of them have given me gifts. And uh, so I wanted to show those and put those together. These are the knives that good friends that I've made since doing this with other channels uh, have sent me. And uh, and also listeners of the show and viewers of the show. And each one of them means a lot to me just because they were sent to me out of the kindness of someone's heart, out of enthusiasm and that shared, um, well, that shared enthusiasm for knives. So it means a lot to me, but they are all really awesome knives too. Like it's, uh, it's not like someone's like, Oh, Bob, I, I love knives too. Here, take my old, uh, take my old gas station knife. These are all sweet. So let's get started. First was a gift uh, from our good friend, Stu. This was probably the first gift I got from a listener of the show. Our good friend, Stu, he has a, uh, a company up in Vermont, Stone and Steel, and they sell knives 
at uh, gun shows and such. He reached out to me, said, I carry in my back pocket uh, the big brother of this. Do you think you want something like it? And I said, yes. And it is the Spyderco Delica Warncliffe with the serrated edge. Now, Stu asked me, he's like, do you want the Endura or the Delica? And uh, I love big knives, but I opted for the Delica because I just know myself and I, I don't carry my Endura, but I do carry my Delicas. And these ride beautifully in the back left pocket next to my bandana. So I knew that I'd be carrying this. He sent it to me and uh, I was carrying it for about a year, maybe a year and change. And then whilst perusing Smoky Mountain Knife Works, I saw that uh, they also, and I say also because these are not flytanium titanium scales. These are Rocky Mountain or uh, Smoky Mountain Knife Works titanium scales. They probably make them in their Rough Rider shop or something like that. But they're aftermarket scales. I wanted to dress this knife up a little. It means a lot to me. It had that uh, the black grivery handle and uh, it works great. And, and it's nice and light, but I just wanted to sp special it up a little. So I got these titanium scales. This is a great knife. Stu, thanks so much. Uh, the serrations on the spidey, spidey teeth. What do they call those? Uh, spidey, spidey edge teeth are just wicked. I love this little knife. So that's going to sit over here on the left. Next, Christine from Women Carry Knives. Awesome channel, uh, great, great lady. I, I was commenting on her video of this knife. This is the CRKT Pete. And I was like, man, that's such a classy little knife. I, I, I love that thing. Of course, this is designed by uh, Jesper Voxnez and it has all of his sort of design signatures. It's just a charming little knife. And it's uh, it's got, uh, uh, what do you call it? Dust, um, <laughs> the GRN handles. It's got a nice anodized blue backspacer, deep carry pocket clip with countersunk screws and, and flat head screw uh, tops. It's just a great knife. It's got a, it's got a thin slicey blade. Well, it's actually kind of stout for a small blade, but it gets to a really thin edge. Great knife. I commented on her thing. I love that knife. I got to get me one. And she was like, gave me, you know, give me your address. And she sent it to me. And I thought how, how cool is that? That was one of my first interactions with of the type with a fellow YouTuber. I was like, oh, that's so cool, man. She obviously likes the knife from how she reviewed it. And, uh, you know, she recognized that I liked it too, I guess, because I kept talking about it. And she sent it to me and I thought that was awesome. So definitely check out Women Carry Knives on YouTube. She has a great channel and her husband, A Therapeutic Edge, also has a great channel. Next was a gift from our good friend, Mike Latham. Mike Latham uh, is the owner and proprietor and mastermind of uh, collectorknives.net. Collectorknives.net is a is a online purveyor where you can get Great Eastern cutlery knives and you can get a lot of the slip joint and traditional style knives that we all love. Excuse me. And uh, Mike also designs knives and uh, collaborates with Fox and uh, Lion Steel and uh, the, the Italian knife makers to come out with some beautiful modern slip joints. This, uh, he had been listening to the show and I was going off, I was in my Rough Rider phase and Rough Rider and Marbles are adjacent. So uh, he sent me this really cool elephant toenail by Marbles with this beautiful uh, green bone that's been sort of stagified you know it's not real stag but they kind of made it look like it uh beautiful beautiful stout elephant toenail knife um elephant toenail is uh, a big broad slip joint with a with a big spear point blade that's quite broad and a and a giant uh you know kind of pill shaped handle and uh really fits the hand well at the way the myth goes, it's used for on ships. Like you put this big blade uh, on top of a piece of rope and then you pound on it with a mallet. Uh, apparently that's not actually true. I really like the idea of that being true. 
Uh, but really, this was used a lot by uh, Midwestern electricians, apparently, at the height of its, uh, at the height of this design's uh, popularity. You've got that big spear point blade, and then you have a, a smaller, very hard to extract, and quite sharp, uh, let me wipe this down, pen blade on the back. This is just a really, <laughs> this knife has a lot of character. This has a lot of character. Thanks, Mike. He sent me a package a while back with four or five Rough Riders in it and this. <laughs> he heard he heard my junkie talk and he was like, I got to I got to just, you know, I got to I got to help this guy's Jones out. And he sent me this fantastic knife. All right. Next. Joe, the knife whisperer, good friend of the show and uh, another guy with a great channel. He's hilarious and he's got great taste in knives and uh, he offers uh, great insight packaged in humor. I mean, what better way to get insight but packaged in humor? He sent me this just out of the kindness of his heart. This is the Civivi Dogma. Now, I had the Civivi Shredder, which has a similar, similarly uniquely shaped clip point blade with a giant opening hole. And I liked it, uh, especially for the uniqueness of the blade, but it just, you know, left me a little bit cold. Now, with knives that I know I'm not going to carry in my front right pocket, I like them smaller. Uh, I, I just know that uh, the shredder was just not one I carried. So I knew that a smaller version of that would even be better. And uh, that's what this is, basically. It's the smaller, <laughs> better looking brother of the shredder, if you ask me. I love that blade. It's got a real long, wicked shaped clip and a nice curving belly shape with an acute point and also a choil for your finger for that close in work, whatever that is. And then you've got that nice big opening hole. And this is on bearings and flips like a dream. But also, uh, if you use your right hand, or if I use my right hand, it's Spidey flicks quite nicely. Let me see if I can do that with my left hand. Uh, uh, no. Okay. So uh, Joe, recognizing my tastes and being a cool guy, said, I have this knife. I'm, I want to send it to you as a gift. And he did. And I'm very grateful. Uh, this thing is uh, definitely pajama knife. You know, this is definitely a light. This is a workout shorts knife. Um, great for light pants and light carry. If you look in here, um, I'm going to try and show you. Yeah, you can see the liners. And they look like uh, sort of like, uh, like bridge work. They've gotten rid of so much material there and have just left a rigid sort of bridge triangular interlocking bridge framework thing my point being it's very rigid because of the liners but very light because they they got rid of a lot of material from the liners okay the next two are from bj hill of hilltop gear and he has a great channel but also does great modification work uh he's been setting things on fire doing his modifications to the rat two and rat one but also the yojumbo and the yojimbo he's got a, a he's been uh, modding these knives and has a real look of his own and style going in any case uh, we were talking online he was like I, I understand you like rough riders i'm gonna send you one and he, he did this is a rough rider i guess that he had for a while this is a, a trapper traditional style trapper meaning it's got the muskrat style clip blade this one has two pulls. Unnecessary, but thank you. And uh, it also has a very useful spay blade. This is the traditional trapper slip joint setup. Spay blade for spaying animals. And that clip joint blade for cutting your cheese. You know, all in the same afternoon. So uh, this thing also has a copper handle. And then uh, it's punctuated with these really nice bone. They look kind of like Appaloosa. Oh, I don't know. I don't know what kind of bone. Oh, I'm sure it's a cow shin bone, but it kind of looks like an Appaloosa style bone. Is that right? Am I just am I just saying things I've heard before? That's probably possible. Now, if we're going to look at this uh, 
aesthetically, there's one thing I don't like. And you're, you're thinking, oh, it's the untraditional black coated blade. And you'd be wrong. I actually think it looks really cool. I also like the look of the handle. The one thing aesthetically I don't like are the double pulls. Never liked them. Don't like them on GECs. Don't like them here. I know that I guess finer knives had that. But, you know, one's enough for me. It's just another opportunity for filth and muck to get stuck in your blade. Does anyone know what filth and muck is from? Anyone know? If you uh, if you write me and let me know what filth and muck comes from, I'll send you a t-shirt. There, I said it. I'll send you a t-shirt. All right, so let's do this. Next is another one from BJ Hill. And uh, this one was cool. He, I, I have to be honest, he suggested you could sell this if you want, but I'm not going to... I'm not going to take a gift knife and sell it. And uh, plus, I really like this knife. Uh, this is the Kaiser Roach. I've always been Kaiser Roach curious, but never went for it. Uh, this is a Matt Degnan design. And, you know, we talk about neutral handles on this show and, and uh, the good and the bad. And this has the opposite of a neutral handle. This is, this is far... <laughs> far curved, far contoured. I mean, it really forces your hand into positions. Um, positions that I'm not fond of. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but this one part back here, uh, as you can see, there's a little pinky thing where, where you, there are three swales on the handle of this knife. There's a finger choil up front for your forefinger. There's a middle swale for your next two fingers. And then there's a third dip out where your pinky is supposed to go. And it's fine, but I, I just, I think this last little thing was unnecessary. And it reduces your options. However, it also adds to the charm of this knife. I mean, look at that ridiculous handle. It's, it's so, it's so cool. <laughs> it looks great. And when you have it locked in, it feels great. Uh, you just can't be too sloppy about how you hold this knife. Now, uh, it's begging, it's begging for this grip, for choking up in that, in that finger choil on the blade and sliding everything up by one digit. This is the most comfortable way to use this knife. And this is probably the most effective way to use this knife too, because as you can see here, this is a broad leaf-shaped blade. This to me uh, is like a pocket barong. It reminds me of the Filipino barong. It's just like a big leaf-shaped blade, very broad. And the flat grind goes almost all the way to the spine. As you can see, it's four-fifths of the way up the blade, I guess. And uh, it's very thin and sharp behind that, behind that edge. Mm -hmm. So this is a really, really great user knife. Contoured G10 handle scales are very comfortable uh, as long as your fingers find the right place. And then there's that gray titanium coating on the blade. And what is the blade? What is this? I think it's D2. No, this is N690, the vaunted European. That's like their, that's like their, I don't know, 154CM or something. I, I, I'm not speaking in terms of um, steel qualities, but in terms of how common it is. N690 is, is, is the most common European blade steel, as, as far as I can tell. All right, I'll just stop there. Next is from Lavender Pants, our good friend Lavender Pants 86. Uh, he's a good friend of Thursday Night Knives and the show. And uh, he sent me this. This is the Boker Kalashnikov XL, the Kalashnikov 74 XL Bowie. Uh, apparently, this was uh, his wife was concerned about this being in the same house with their lovely children. And so he said, Do you? Well, he sent it to me. And uh, knowing that th that's not a concern in this household, I guess, <laughs> uh, this is a cool knife. It's an automatic, as you can see, so uh, can't take this out of the house. But it's this really unique Bowie blade with that abrupt clip point and a long straight. I like the long straight. It's a very good and usable blade. This is D2 steel. Here, let me hold this up. You got... You got your D2 steel there, and then uh, aluminum, textured aluminum handles. Great jimping on the back. And you know what? You need that for this big knife. You know, this is presumably something that you might use in a tactical situation. You don't have much of a 
guard here. So that jimping for the thumb is not only welcome, but uh, I'm glad that it it's a, it's good jimping. It works well. You have uh, that nice sort of polished stone wash um, effect on the blade finish and a very, very sharp blade. And then the edge just kind of stops right there. I kind of wish they took it all the way, but, you know, you've got the weird clip and uh, slappy action. Now there's snappy action and there's slappy action. To me, Protex, Protec out the sides are snappy. They like snap open and jump out, you know, almost want to jump out of your hand. Uh, the uh, Benchmade out, out the sides that I've experienced are slappy. Whoosh! They're still powerful. They still come out, but they there's a little bit of um, jello lag when they come out. They just they flop out a little bit. And that's the same thing with this, with the Boker Kalashnikov. It's not snappy. Uh, it's not the the spring is not stout enough to bring this giant blade out in a snappy kind of pro tech way. It's a little more lackadaisical. But hey, man, it gets there in, in like, uh, you know, a tenth of a second later, I guess. I, I can I can deal with that. Just as long as it's not too strong that it doesn't engage the lock. That's the real problem with uh, too strong a spring on, on an automatic. So thank you, Lavender Pants. I love this uh, love this knife, and it, it, it is the third of my bokers. I have a small <laughs> clutch, and uh, that's probably where I'll keep it until they come out with something uh, something new, though. Uh, they Man, they just recently ripped off a of Fred Perrin uh, fixed blade design and Fred Perrin was like what is this and he got a whole bunch of people on Instagram kind of uh, uh, incensed about it and they pulled the product if you looked at it it was an exact copy of one of his little street worn cliffs um, Fred Perrin French knife designer and knife fighting expert and just general badass that designs you know has a line of fixed blades and man they just some designer got that through and some people at Boker didn't realize it or something. That's benefit of the doubt. But um, I'm, I'm glad they were responsive to the crowd uh, uproar. Not that I'm saying, well, whatever, not going there. Next is uh, a gift from our good, good friend, Dave. Uh, this old sword, Blade Reviews, another great channel on, um, on YouTube. I really love Dave's uh, taste in knives. He, he like I trends towards the large and the tactical folders he's got a, a a background in in filipino martial arts like i like i do but he's he trained long term with some of the real heavy hitters and uh so he sent along a few knives uh for for the giveaways and uh he said i could keep whatever i want and and i said i'm, I'm not going to keep any of them however i'm going to foster this one this is the Cold Steel Immortal. And uh, and by the way, that is a joke. I, I told him I was going to keep it. Uh, but, you know, like how you foster a child or a dog. Uh, I, w I was thinking I would foster this and give it a good home for a while. And then, but the truth is, I always regretted not getting an Immortal. And this one is in CTX XHP, a steel that I really like and am more interested in having on a Cold Steel than S35VN. For what reason? No real reason. It's just how I feel. It's all emotions based over here at the Knife Junkie Podcast. Uh, but this knife, uh, if you look at it, is it's like a Tanto, an American Tanto meets a Gladius. And it's in, in your pocket here. Looking at the blade, if you look at just the bottom part, it is 100% cold steel American Tanto just with a sort of extended tip. And then you add the top and you have that swedge. It's an incredible thruster here. So, oh, and also on the back, the backspacer is an aluminum gear pattern uh, crown. And you can really crown someone with it. And it offers great grip for your thumb in reverse grip. This is an awesome knife. And it, I think it kind of gets a little uh, short shrift out there. Um, I remember Jimmy Slash kind of gave it a negative review when it came out. It just didn't fit his hand well. And uh, I don't know. I, I, I really like it. I think it's got a lot of character. And uh, for a, a tactical knife, I think it'd be extremely useful. And just an everyday, just bang around knife, I think it'd be useful if you can handle carrying a, 
a, you know, a gladius around in your pocket. Okay, two more. The last, uh, second to last one, the penultimate one is this. Man, what an amazing gift. This is from uh, Bill, a good friend of the show. And uh, this is the Emerson Super CQC 15. It's the perfectly sized 15. Uh, I used to have the standard sized one with the shorter blade and the shorter handle. And I don't have large hands, but I remember feeling like, uh, like I was being boxed in by the handle. It was just not quite long enough to have such a pronounced bird's beak at the end. Um, I ended up selling that quite a while ago. And here, Bill gets in touch with me and says, I have a knife and I have a strict rule of collecting. Collect three, carry one. And uh, this one's getting pushed out of my pocket. Can I send it to you? And I said, please do. <laughs> and uh, what, a, what, a, what an amazing gift this is. He sent it to me without a clip because he carried it in his front pocket, I think with a, with a lanyard, and had lost the clip. So I had an old busted up clip from something else, put it on there. And I like how that looks. He got a silver opening button here from gray. I think that's gray precision. Just a great and extremely generous gift. Now, you know uh, Emersons are very sharp, especially I find, especially the V-ground uh, ones or the or the large chisel ground ones. Uh, but this one is just because of the broadness of the blade and the height of the grind. It's just extremely sharp. I mean, this is just scary sharp, and we like that. Scary, scary, not scary. Look at that grind. Mm -mm. So this one is, uh, this is game for a micarta handle also. And uh, up there you can see, I don't know what that is. That's from towels trying to clean what, what was there in the first place. Their, their G10 is like sandpaper, so it picks up a lot of stuff. Okay, here we are at the last one. This is number 10, 10 out of 10 of the top gifts from Knife Community Friends. And these, of course, were in no particular order. Uh, this is my new backpack knife. It has replaced my Recon 1 4-inch um, clip point, which was riding in my backpack, and my SOG uh, uh, seal pup fixed blade. Uh, temporarily, I wanted to see what it's like just to have one knife that I don't use in my bag. And so it's this, a gift from Jimmy Slash, and that is the 4Max Scout. Jimmy Slash was on the show a little while back, and he's been on uh, he's been on a couple of times. What a great guy! We did a deep cut about uh, large cold steel folders, and uh, at some point in that conversation, I mentioned that I had never had a four max, and he's got a sprawling collection of four maxes. Uh, I, I believe he's got uh, a couple that are actual custom Demco four maxes. And then he has every possible iteration from the Italian made to the US made to the scouts to the new one that they have that just came out in 2022. He is a devotee, devotee, devote. He is devoted to the Formax uh, platform. So he sent me this scout, like, like shame on you <laughs> for being a lover of cold steel, large knives and not having this. And yes, indeed, shame on me, Jimmy. Uh, Josh, thank you so much. I appreciate this. This is such a great knife. And I, I mean, just unbelievably like that back spring is a quarter inch thick. That, uh, blade steel, I don't know how, how thick the blade steel is, but it's, it's pretty stout, but look at how broad it's almost two inches wide. So there's a lot, a lot of room for that flat ground blade to to thin out behind the edge and this thing is as all cold steel knives are just a wicked wicked cutter so uh i did an audit of my backpack my daily carry bag and i just have way too much stuff in there so this was part of trying to uh trying to streamline the streamline the the backpack and and but also see you know will this take the place of a fixed blade how much do you use that fixed blade you keep in your backpack, Bob? You might say, well, never, never, except never. So that's why I think I'm safe probably taking this short period of time not having a fixed blade. 
in my backpack. Welcome to my mind, people. Welcome to my head, you know. Jeez, really? You think this much about that stuff, Bob? Yes, really I do. But I have some bandwidth, and I think of other stuff too. Really, really important stuff that I can't quite think of at the moment. But I'll let you know next week, right here on the Knife Junkie Midweek Supplemental. Uh, please check out our uh, uh, interview show. came out on Sunday with Israel Bacchus of Arcane Design. Uh, uh, what a pleasure talking to this guy. Super cool guy. and uh, But also has a design philosophy that is so locked in. It's exciting. And uh, from knife to knife, you can see the DNA uh, shared between uh, sibling knives. There is one uh, that he produces that you can buy on his website called the Antimatter. And that's my current folding obsession. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm going to be scheming. I keep using that word. I need to use something else. I'm planning on a purchase of that uh, folding dagger called the antimatter. Um, so anyway, stay tuned for that, but definitely check out, uh, check out the interview show. We'll have another exciting interview on Sunday. And of course, tomorrow night, Thursday night knives at 10 PM Eastern standard uh, right here, live on YouTube until then. I'd like to say thanks for joining me here. Thanks for uh, listening to me talk about my knives. And uh, until we meet again, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Podcast.